There is new research out there that states that one in four people don't feel they have someone that they can confide in. And even after sharing their feelings, seven in 10 people have held back how they really felt from a coworker, a friend, or a partner. I mean, imagine a world where we're not just projecting how we feel onto everybody that we make contact with, but imagine a world in which we're able to have these open conversations about how we really feel. I mean, think about it. When you walk by someone on the street, you say, hey, how are you? And what's the automatic response that you get, right? That person can be going through the utmost inner turmoil of their life, the greatest challenges they've ever faced. And they'll look back at you and they'll say, I'm good, right? But my guest today and my friend who I've known for years now, Kyle Palmer, he said that it's the second what's up that matters the most. And he talks about how it's important for us to be able to open up and have these real conversations with the people that we can trust, whether it's a coworker, a colleague, the people in our personal family. Kyle Palmer talks about how we all have a battle that we hide from other people in order to save face in the world. And he can't be more true. I mean, we all wear these social masks that we feel protect us. But what if those masks did protect us at times? But what if they also harmed us at other times. We're going to be diving into that today. But you know the fee for the broadcast. We don't show any ads. We don't show any sponsors because we don't want to taint your viewing experience, okay? So the only thing that we ask you is when you take something away from this conversation, whether it's a new insight, we gave you something new to think about, something that made you think differently, or even if we made you smile, then share this show with just one other person who is important to you who could also use this information. So without further ado, let's talk to our man of the hour, Mr. Kyle Palmer. He is a man who wears many hats. For those who don't know Kyle, he is a community leader in Rochester, New York. He finds passion in serving his community by learning and understanding the challenges that it faces. Kyle serves individuals through his consultative approach to addressing insurance needs, and he serves his community through his continued volunteer efforts and leading other young professionals. Kyle, great to finally have made this happen, brother, after all this time. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Uh, it's, a, it's a great morning. I'm, I'm excited to be on here with you and looking forward to uh, sharing a little bit more and you know, with your audience and hope they take something away today. The pleasure is mine, dude. We were going to do this last week, but it was the day after Rochester's Finest, which was incredible. Thank you again for the opportunity to come speak to those young professionals. One thing about you, man, that stands out from your intro and your bio, but also just stands out through conversation with you, is it's very clear that the number one focus you have in your life is family, for sure. But a close second would be the community that you serve. And while we've known of each other for years, we had never really had a, a full conversation even until until last week, when we talked last week after the event. And you know, there's one thing that I've always wanted to, always wanted to ask you, because I see you post about it all the time. But if you had to give me one of your favorite facts about llamas or alpacas, <laughs> what would your favorite fact be that you share with us today? Oh, man. So many facts to choose from. Uh, <laughs> so first, if, what, if, why llamas and alpacas? Like if you go to your featured section, like yeah. one of your pictures is like these three nicely groomed alpacas. Like what, I love those creatures, <laughs> by the way. They're fascinating animals. Like why that animal? They, uh, to me, they're like large dogs um, that are much furrier. Uh, but my, <laughs> my passion actually came from uh, when I moved up here from Florida and I started leading the events program. I was doing obviously a lot of the county fairs and one of the county fairs that I did uh, and, and set up was the Cataraugus County Fair. Now Cataraugus is south of Buffalo. Um, and with our booth, we were set up directly across from a alpaca farmer uh, that had like three or four alpacas in a pen uh, for people to come by and, you know, petting zoo type. And they also had all these, you know, obviously they, they, they grow fiber and then they turn that fiber into jackets, hats, socks. Um, here's, here's a good one for you. If you want warm socks for the winter, alpaca fiber and uh, makes great uh, socks. They're softer than cashmere. They, um, they wick sweat uh, a lot better. 
they uh, keep your feet warmer. So that's just wow. one of the many facts. But also, you can keep up to 10 alpaca per one acre of land. And 10 alpaca? That is 10 alpaca in one acre of land. So that's that's obviously a goal <laughs> for me <laughs> is to uh, own a area, you know, a, a piece of land large enough uh, that I can that I can have some alpaca on there. But yeah, I mean, they, they really are. And I, and people tend to t- tend to reach in and try to pet the head. Always pet the neck. They don't like petting. Oh, the head. yeah. So if you ever see them in a petting zoo, pet the neck, not the head. Good to know, man, dude. When you have that, when you own those alpacas, you're gonna have the warmest feet around, dude. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I love that. Yeah. Thanks for sharing those. I was, I was curious for because I've seen you post about them a lot, but I was like, I gotta ask him about that. It's a great way to start this. Oh yeah, uh, and f- now you see a lot of the trendy stuff, right? Where you see a lot of uh, llamas and um, on like uh, clothing and just all that kind of stuff that's in, you know, that you find in the stores. Uh, and there's, there's actually a commercial. I think I forgot what the lady's name. She's a pretty f- uh, familiar actor. If you see her, uh, I think it's on an Amazon commercial, but she's talking to her daughter and there, she's like, they're, she's like, obviously they're at school. You can see the bus and the school behind her. Uh, but she's got all this, like a pack of shirt socks. Like uh, I think she's got actual, like shoes or boots on that have alpaca. And she's making a joke. She's like, yeah, is, isn't that a camel? And she says, "No, it's a it's a llama." Fun fact: a llama is part of the camelid family, so technically, it is interesting. A <laughs> so that's the that's the joke of the commercial. In case no one catches it, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they look alike. I didn't know that they were part of that family, dude. You just threw like four yeah. facts at us. So everyone, you you heard me at the beginning. <laughs> you, I, I knew that you didn't know those guys. So if if you learn something new, share the show. We got you. There was your fun fact for the day. <laughs> So the the main thread of this conversation, Kyle, because you are someone where, by the way, everyone, you got to go follow Kyle's social profiles, right? I I think his Facebook is mostly private for him, but he correct me if I'm wrong, but LinkedIn is where you want to go follow Kyle because he posts posts from the heart. Like there's several posts that I've read from you, man, that were very vulnerable. Um, they were very open about your life and the challenges that you faced in your life, you know, with the people closest to you and your family even. And I found myself reading them just feeling gratitude for my own life, right? But also gratitude for you sharing those experiences from yours. And it very much ties into the thread of living your own truth, right? Not bottling up these emotions until they burst later in our life, right? They say that the body remembers instances from the past and it holds on to these emotions and these feelings and and just like i said at the beginning imagine a world where we were able to talk to people about these things and that doesn't necessarily mean guys that you have to be just as open and vulnerable and post it for everyone to see like kyle did that for many reasons i'm sure one of the main reasons was to share that and hope that it helps even one other person who was going through something similar or their own challenge so my question for you is you you've mentioned the battle that we hide in order to save face from the world. That's a very wise saying. And I'm curious, what inspired you to, to write that? What inspired you to, to, to create that phrase? And what does that mean to you personally? I think uh, for me specifically, and, and kind of why that was brought up, and probably at the time, and it's just one of those things you, uh, that's always in thought, it's, you know, you, you said at the beginning of the show when someone says, hey, what's up? You know, you're like, oh, I'm great. Really, like, it really is that second, like, no, man, like, really, like, how are you doing? Um, that that sh- you want to get people to open up. And sometimes we are very guarded of our feelings. Um, I am, you know, currently, you know, even with with my own with my own wife, I have those uh have those reserves of which I don't share everything with it. There's reasons that I do it um, not to keep stuff from her, but to keep her from being stressed out because uh, her feelings are sometimes based off of my feelings. So I feel like I had to have to rein it in a little bit and keep some of that control, um, not like control of her, but just being able to control um, the emotions that I present to her as well. So she doesn't uh, stress out to the end. Uh, she's currently pregnant. So that's the last thing that I want wow. is her stressing out with, you know, our child being born in her, you know, inside of her. So congratulations, um, by the way, that's incredible. Thanks, man. And it, and this, when you're, when you're mentioning me, like posting on LinkedIn and sharing those vulnerabilities, 
I'll be honest with you, probably five or six years ago, that wouldn't have been me. Uh, and it, it really came to a uh, just a like a Instagram conversation I was having with a a, a high school. I, I, now I guess I can kind of call her like a friend. It's uh, you know we we kind of go back and forth on on Instagram, um, but we you know we were I wouldn't say we were close at any point. But she you know I she posts a lot of being vulnerable and just where she, kind of things that she's going through in her life. And I would always just say I appreciate you sharing that. And then we just had a side conversation. She's like you know, you really can be be vulnerable and share those things. It really helps you process your emotions, which I think is extremely important. Um, I know, you know, I share a lot personally on my Facebook as far as what I've gone through in my in my own life. That's stuff I, I kind of share, though, with the people who have may have been there through mm-hmm. those times of in my life versus like LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a, is a professional atmosphere. But part of the reason why I get that I actually got into the financial industry and um, and life insurance specifically uh, was because I was impacted by. Uh, by the product of life insurance because of my own mother's passing, mm. right? Now, given that it was a like a small life insurance policy through work, it was still important that she had that so that my dad could could raise me. Um, but I think sharing my story, the purpose of that stuff is to empower others to share their stories, not for the fact of sharing it with people that can take that information and use it to their advantage. But finding trusted people in your circle that you really can be real with, that you really can share that information with, and it's it's a matter of listening versus them turning around saying, well, this is what you should do. Here's my advice. Well, first off, I didn't ask your advice. Right? <laughs> I, I asked you to loan a ear. Um, and that's where it comes from, like, when someone's asking you or when you say, hey, what's up? Like, do you, do you really mean the first what's up or is it just like, hey, we got to make this small talk while we're yep. in passing? It's automatic. Right? And it's not expected that we're going to say like that's something we're going to do every time we come across somebody. We're not going to dive into the second what's up, but we all have to be on the, on the same understanding that the first what's up is just really just like a, a cordial hello. Um, so, you know, the second what's up, if you really care about the individual that you're asking what's up to. I think it's important to, to ask the second, what's up? Like, no, like, you know, like what's really going on? Uh, because maybe they're afraid to share with other people and maybe they're afraid of being judged based on, you know, what they're going through and they don't know how to deal with it. And sometimes just bringing it up and talking about it out loud does allow them to process that information internally, whether you said anything or not. And sometimes I yeah. think that's what we forget. We're just quick to insert our own opinions and advice. And it's just, it's just stuff that's not welcomed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, cause at that, at that point, the other person just shuts off like, well, I trusted this individual to mm. share this information with, and then they turn around and then started giving me all this advice and inserting their opinions and just, just you know, just feeling judged. Yeah. Um, well, let me, let me ask you, know, you this that, question though. Like, and that, I mean, if, if we think about this guys, like that comes from a good place, like us wanting to give advice, us wanting to help this other person. The only challenge with that is the reality that this other person is living in is very different than the reality that we're living in. We see things differently. We hear things differently. We feel things differently. And by giving advice from our paradigm, it's not always going to fit or even be understood by someone in a completely different paradigm. Like even you said, you were in a very different place five years ago. Five years in reality is a very short blip in time, but the Kyle Palmer now is very different from the Kyle Palmer five years ago. So that wanting to give advice, like that's that's a flaw of mine that I'm constantly working on getting better at when people do tell me their feelings. And I'm like, well, have you tried this? And it's like an inside joke with my wife now where she'll literally be like, I don't want advice, but let me tell you about what's going on. And she'll tell me, and I have to like bite my lip not to give advice because we want to help people. We want to do good, especially when you have a podcast that's all about helping people. But uh, it's it's really ego of, hey, well, I know the answer. I know exactly what you right. need to do, right? So I guess exactly. people are probably wondering, well, if we're not giving advice and this person just poured everything onto me, 
how do you react, Kyle, when when other people do open up to you after you ask that second what's up? Like, no, really, tell me what's really going on. Like, what what do you then say as a response to those to those people? I think it's you know it's easy for what like I said it's easy for us to want to give that advice because we do just I think as human beings we want to be able to help other people, um, and you know to your point as well like those we have different perspectives on what like they're going through. We think we can, we've been through the same thing. Um, but in, in actual reality, you know, in all reality, they're two very different uh, circumstances. Uh, it, it, you know, if, if someone is, is divulging themselves to me, if they're sharing those emotions, you know, my, my question is always how, one, you know, how can I help is, you know, maybe it's just recommending a therapist, you know, it could be that simple, but, typically not right sometimes those people don't want to to go the professional means um and if that's not the case is there something that i can do for you that can help ease some of that is there um is it just is it just having me to talk to um like i said if i just make sure be clear like if you don't want my advice i won't give my advice uh, mm -hmm. i think that's the important piece like i, I need them to know that I'm not here sitting here judging them, but I am absorbing the information just so I can, it's, it's just being empathetic. And sometimes there's obviously understanding the difference between empathy and something. I'm not feeling bad for them. I'm trying to relate to who they are and what they're feeling in that moment. And it's, um, it's a process. And mm. I think, you know, I'm not sure how much, about emotional intelligence that you've read up on. I think that's one of the biggest things that was, you know, a, a mentor of mine from, you know, from my previous career, uh, well, in between the careers mm -hmm. uh, after cellular sales. But, you know, that he said, hey, listen, like, you're, you're great with people, but I would recommend you reading a little bit more into emotional intelligence, just being self-aware on the things that you're saying, how they affect other people when you say them, um, how to regulate your own emotions when, when speaking to others. Uh, but that's really taught me a lot on, on how to be a little bit more effective in my communication with other individuals. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, coming back to it, it's really just maybe there is nothing that, that I need to do. Maybe it's just simply is like, do you want me to be here to listen? Because I'm happy to do that for you. Um, if you are, If you need more from me, just let me know if you, if you want someone else that you want me to, you know, that I can help send you to, to, to talk to and kind of go through that. Maybe I can, like I said, again, you always want to start offering advice, but in reality, the, people are going to process their own emotions differently. Yeah. I'm, and sometimes I'm just sharing. Yeah. It, sometimes no, it's just simple just, as sharing. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Just giving that person the space to say what it is that they want to say or they need to say, or they weren't even sure that they, they wanted to say it. But how many times have you talked to somebody and after a week or so of them talking to you about what they're going through, they give you an update and they're like, Hey, you know, during that conversation that I had with you, when by the way, really it wasn't even a conversation because it was really just them sharing I'm with you. The <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they say during that conversation with you, it helped me to come to some realizations. And then we're thinking like, oh my God, I didn't even say anything. But like literally 80% of coaching with, with the clients that I work with, it's me asking a question, them speaking. And a lot of the people, especially those who, who internalize by externalizing, the, the external thinkers that we all know, they help themselves because it's it's often that we have the answer that we need. Like, Whenever I'm stumped on something, I always think like, what if I was coaching myself? What advice would I give myself in this moment? And sometimes just by putting our thoughts out there and speaking them into existence, we come to the solution without the third party just throwing and barraging us with advice. Sometimes it really is just as easy as saying it out loud to someone. Like you could say it into the mirror and it's not going to have the same effect as you feeling connected with somebody and being able to share that information and comfortable sharing that information where you're like, now that I say it out loud, now I get it. Like now I kind of know maybe some next steps I need to take on my own. Um, yeah. Not something that, you know, not, not, 
you know, it's not you telling them these are what you should do. You should see a therapist. You should do X. Like, no, like they're, I mean, I've done it many of times. So, mm-hmm. so I know if I'm not the only person in this entire being that is, is similar. Um, so like I said, sometimes it's just being a, being a sponge for someone else and just, just absorbing that information so they can say it out loud. And then next thing you know, they've, they've moved on from that thought onto the next thought and Hey, now I can start creating my own plan because from just, from just simply just stating it, I, I now understand where I'm at. I think that question of how can I help you is super important too, because I spoke to someone a long time ago on the show and uh, he's amazing stuff on LinkedIn. Actually, I think you'd really enjoy meeting him. His name is Joseph Gonzalez and his phrase that he always talks about is doing exactly what you mentioned, asking people, how are you? And then when they say the generic good asking, well, how are you really? And, and them opening up and telling him and his famous question is how can I help you right now? in this moment, how can I help you? And, you know, if people don't have something that he can do in that moment, then sometimes it's as simple as, well, you know, you helped me already just by listening. So rather than throwing advice, just asking people, you know, how is it that I can help you? Maybe there is a specific thing. Maybe they'll say, hey, you're really good at this thing, or it appears that you're really good at this specific thing that I'm struggling with. Do you have a book recommendation? What did you do in order to get through this? Like then, they've opened the door for you to actually give a piece of advice because now they're asking for it. Right. And if they ask for it, that's different than you just offering it, you know, on your own accord. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, And just so we can clarify too, I think uh, someone coming to you and sharing their emotions um, between someone and, and, and then the other side of it, like someone coming to coming to you with a new problem every single week, (laughs) those are are two different people just so we're clarifying Um, yes so you you have to it's obviously our jobs too to kind of recognize that hey listen like there's there's more help you need than i can't provide like Mm. let's just let's just cut cut that um because sometimes like i said sometimes people can work through their own emotions but then you get some of the people that just something new you need people to talk to man when i was training salespeople with cellular sales I always told people like, and I said it kind of in a joking way, but it really is serious. Like welcome to sales where you are going to learn so much more about these random people than you ever cared or asked to learn about. Like people just open up to you because, you know, in the world that we came from for many years, we sold phones and we're sitting with people for an hour to an hour and a half. Very rarely are strangers sitting down with people for an hour to an hour and a half, just talking and filling the space there. So people would talk about their relationships. People would talk about their struggles. I can every single day, someone talks to me about how someone is sick in their family or how they're sick or whatever it is. And I always told the new salespeople like, Hey, listen, you're about to enter a world where everyone's going to talk about their problems and you might necessarily feel like you don't have a space to talk about your own. I said, so if you feel that way, get a therapist, like find someone who you can talk to and have these conversations with, like having those people in your life that you know you can just have a conversation with about everything you're doing, both the good, the wins, the accomplishments, but also, hey, this is where I'm struggling and just put it all out there without having to worry about burdening that person. Because sure, there are some people who I won't you know, open up to because I feel like it would burden that person, right? It's not the right person. But I think about my personal coach who I've been working with for almost several years. His name is Di. He's been on the show. And the first 10 minutes of every call with him is literally just me talking about all the things that I don't talk to other people about, both the wins, the, you know, the brags about what I'm doing, the things I feel good about, but also this is where I'm struggling. These are the fears I have. I was just talking with someone yesterday, Caleb Nelson, his name is, and he's also been on the show. And I opened up to him about a fear that I was having. And he's like, well, dude, I have that same fear. And I was like, holy crap, other people are feeling this too. And we got into a conversation about the fear. And the fear was this. I'll open up with everyone. My fear was we want to host retreats. But at this point with our current audience, I was like, I just don't want to put all the time and the energy into marketing the retreat and have it fail. And no one shows up. And he's like, dude, I I feel the same exact way. And I feel like even with people who do have the quote unquote audience for that, 
it's a fear that we all experience. So the things that you're feeling, other people certainly fear the same thing and feel the same way. So find someone to, to have that conversation with, right? And, and it's easier said than done. But uh, even if you just have a few trusted sources, man, it can make a dramatic difference in your, your own quality of life. Yeah, I, and to kind of bounce off that too, I mean, I have, there's a select few people in my life, right? Like, you you know, you, you have friends, um, but then you have, like, when I'm, when I'm thinking about, like, who do I need to go to for this? Like, what, what, what emotion am I trying to process? Um, who do I believe I can talk to that I think will, like, give me valuable advice or just listen if I need them to? Um, and that's, that's honestly happened a, a, a couple times this week um, where I've been like, I need to talk to somebody, but I can't just talk to any of my friends mm. because I know, you know, cause I know emotionally where some of them stand. Yeah. Um, so they, they, they may not be to that um, maturity level where I can feel confident enough being able to talk through my emotions with them and them kind of to be able to understand it because they come from a, it, it may be because they just come from a different life and that's fine. Right. And that's the yeah. part of like finding the right people, um, making sure that you have your, your, your circle of trust with the, with the friends that mean the most. And you may not talk to them all about the same thing. Um, but knowing who to kind of, be able to go to for that kind of help and funny it's funny that you mentioned too about having the same problems just mm -hmm. before this phone call or before this uh before this uh live session i was on a call with another local entrepreneur and i was telling her you know i was telling her my my current struggles and she was like i'm right there with you hmm. and i'm like i, I thought you, you go into, especially the entrepreneur life, you're like, you're like, I'm the only one going through this. Like, who can I, like, there's no one else. Like, no, I think it's the same, it's the same struggle for a lot of entrepreneurs that are building their business. And it's always this like internal struggle and having that conversation with her allowed me to be like, oh, okay, well, there are other people going through that. So don't ever think that you're the only one that's going through a certain situation. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. When you spoke with that mentor and they recommended, Hey, you know, you're great with people, but you could even take it to the next level by looking more into emotional intelligence. Was there a specific book that they recommended or you found on your own that really helped you in this area? There is a book on emotional intelligence through the Harvard Business Review um, that I would they ha they actually have a full set and I ended up buying a couple of the because they they go into the individual topics of emotional intelligence uh, so for instance like self awareness self regulation uh, so there's a they have a whole actual book set but Harvard Business Review if you haven't looked into those resources on there one they have a lot of great content, especially for leaders. Um, they have a, they have a lot of great resources. They have, you know, books that they sell on there as well. Uh, there is the one that I, I was trying to remember the author's name. Let's see if it's here. No, it's in my, it's on my bookshelf in the other room. Um, it's, uh, it's really an interesting topic it, for the, for leaders that are maybe struggling to communicate with their team or even to, to their counterparts, I highly recommend it because it does give you some uh, activities to, to self-reflect on. So when you're done with conversations with people, you're looking back and, and looking over the full conversation and saying, is there stuff that I said that may have been like a shock to somebody? Because mm. I think sometimes it, I'm, I'm a, a, a product of this, not a product of it, but I guess that's a bad term to use for that. But I know that I'm one of these people that prior to that conversation with him, I know this was me. Like, mm -hmm. I don't care what the other person thinks. Like, they, this needs to be said, right? I, I, I'm going to be blunt. I'm going to be direct. And I'll be honest with you. I learned that trait from one of my really good friends that I've known since I was like 21, mm -hmm. maybe 20. And she's just very direct, very blunt, doesn't care about what the other person thinks. And I'm like, oh, well, 
why wouldn't I? Like, yeah, why wrong, wouldn't I just put, put my feelings <laughs> out there. Like, they need to know how I feel, and no matter what, at what cost, you know, at, at what rate that 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 expands it, because that could burn a lot of bridges. Yeah, and learning to be effective in your communication will take you a lot farther than just being blunt with somebody. Yes. So you you really do need to strategically talk to people because you have to understand you have to understand the room like there's a difference between you and i having a conversation and us understanding each other's individual personalities than there is when we're talking to a group of individuals right Mm -hmm. now we're not we're not catering to whether you're a a dynamo or a thinker right those are the terms that you and i are pretty familiar with but when you start Mm -hmm. to like when you start to um, do a little bit more research into personalities then you start to understand, well, you know, you know, if that person is a thinker, they need more information. What, what, what do I need to adapt? How do I need to adapt when talking to them? So I'm more effective in that, in that conversation. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's like, that's the important piece is, is understanding one yourself and just reflecting on when you're done having meetings or talking with your superiors or, your your you know i don't want to say lower teammates that's not the word i want to use but you know your actual team the team that you're leading how did you come across how were you do you think the conversation was effective do you think it was well received do um do you feel like you may have said something that may have sharply cut somebody just not knowing like so you you do need to reflect on those conversations and you do need to reflect on those those speaking opportunities that you have when leading and making sure that you're understanding the audience of who you're speaking to and you know similar to our session with Rochester's finest i understand that you want to know who you're talking to so you can be the most effective yeah. in your deli- in the delivery of your message it's super important uh, so that's why, you know, both in business and in personal relationships, it's super important for people to understand that although you may think your opinion is well received by everyone, no matter how direct you give it, it's not. And there's if you're not understanding the person you're you're talking to sitting across from you, your message probably isn't being received. So you just wasted breath. Damn. I mean, dude, the last five minutes, everyone, if you rewound that and listen to that five more times, that's going to relate to your personal relationships. It's going to relate to your spouse. It's going to relate to work, leadership, everything. I mean, that was absolutely beautiful. I I read this book by Dan Goleman called Emotional Intelligence 2.0. I think it is emotional. Just Dan Goleman, you'll find it. It's a really good book. I will say it's a drier book but it does have a lot of practicality in it. And he, he tells stories and really you just summed up what that book talks about in a very big way. And that's a great leadership tip. And I think that's also where it's important. We're a mentor. If, if you have a mentor asking them, Hey, how could I have done that better? Was there anything I said where I could have said it in a different way to better, to better relate to the people who were in the room as I was saying it? Or even if you don't have a mentor by chance, because it's it's a luxury to have that mentor that you can go to and get advice, paying for a coach and finding a leadership coach, finding a, a performance coach, anything, someone who can help you to be a little bit more introspective, right? And give you that outside perspective because, you know, a coach giving you advice is different than you opening up and someone else just giving you advice because it's advice that you actually pay for and ask for. So that was that was a really... I think everything we've talked about here is so important already, brother. I think if people stopped now, they'd take away a ton. But I want to specifically know also, you know, the second part of this conversation is how can we make a positive difference in the lives of other people? And if we just practice what we've already gone through, we'll we'll do that, right? We'll be more attentive to others. We'll be listening more to people. We'll truly hear people out. But you take it to the next level. I mean, I don't know anyone who does more in their community than you. And I truly mean that. And I look at that from an outside perspective and I say, I should be doing more with my community. So my question is, why did you get involved in the community? When did that begin? And what is the importance of being involved in your local community, especially in a world where everything is global? Like we're having this conversation, you're five hours away from me, but I have conversations from people in the United Kingdom often. Like why focus on the community rather than global? And when did you get involved? I know there's a lot to unpack there, but I'll let you take it away. That's okay. I, I, I can roll with it. It's uh, <laughs> for me, 
I, I guess understanding what it means to have your community support you. And for me, that started young. Uh, that, that started at the point when I did lose my mother. I was 11 years old. My father is now single. He can't raise me alone. When they say it takes a village, that's when the village showed up. That's when my my dad's friends, my friends, my friend's parents, all of them came to our aid. We would get, I, I can't tell you how many dinners we received just so my dad wouldn't have to come home from work and cook mm. to make his life a little bit easier. And that is my, honestly, that's, that's my first real understanding of community. That's what we're here to do. We, and now we live in this world where we're so, we're, we're so self-involved. We want to get followers, right? We want the followers on Instagram. We want, you know, as, 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 as many people paying attention to me, 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 I, I, I don't, I, I like, I want to be there for my community because I know how important it is because of my own experience. Uh, once I moved to New York, uh, prior to moving to New York, really, I didn't do a, a ton of community work um, because at that point I was young. I was, I think when I moved to New York, I was 25. No, no person in their early twenties that didn't go to college and doesn't understand the meaning of community. Like we're just out there trying to make money and pay our bills. Like we don't care about anything else, right? We care about yeah. making our money, going home and spending as quick as we earned it. So yeah. we, you know, so for me, when I moved here, after I started, you know, dating my wife and I realized that as I was working uh, with sales sales that I had some free time, I had a lot of free time. I'm like, how am I going to fill this free time? I can only play so many uh, extracurricular sports before I hurt myself. Uh, so I was like, what else can I be doing? That's more impactful. I sat, I sat in the back of our, you know, it, it was a, toward, toward the beginning of when I opened the repair center for us. And I would sit back there. I'm like, I don't feel like I'm making the impact in the world that I want to be making by just coming to work and doing my job and repairing phones and people leaving happy. Like that's like, people are, are going to break their phones. It's just going to happen. Like that's, it, it's just the job. But for me, it was like, how can I be more fulfilled and how can I make a larger impact in the world? So I walked into our local Boy Scouts of America council. I said, Hey, I, I'm in here and I want to volunteer. I want to have a direct impact and to use lives. I want to, I want to be front and center working with them and helping them through, you know, development. I spent five, four or five years there at the, the being a cub master for a local uh, inner city, you know, uh, cub scout pack. Mm -hmm. And it was very, it was, it was cool. You know, these, these kids, they grow to love you. Like you're like, like you're their uncle. So it's, it's, it's really a, a unique relationship. Um, after, you know, after that, you know, COVID hit and it kind of like, it became limiting on what we could actually do. So I realized that my time with the Boy Scouts, unfortunately, had kind of come to an end. Mm. And at that point, I, I was also trying to get my own business up and going at the same time. So I was like, my time is becoming limited. I need to focus my efforts. Uh, in that transition after cellular sales, I was doing some work with, well, I was doing some work with a, a larger organization. And I found myself, you know, needing to continue continue networking within my community. And a part of networking, you're, you you get into some of these networking groups. And the ones that I was in, was getting involved in, um, you know, they did have a little bit of old, older members in there. So I'm like, where are all the young professionals at? Where mm. where, where are they? So I'm looking around. <laughs> there was like three of us. <laughs> There's yeah. like out of a out of a, a Zoom call of 30 people, there were like three or four of us. So at that point I reached out to them and said, would you all be interested in, in creating a, a young professional networking group? And then once we, and they, they said, yeah, definitely. They, there, there was a, uh, a networking group here called Rochester young professionals. Um, since COVID they've, they really haven't like bounced back at, uh, just yet. They had a bunch of different, like, clubs and social clubs and networking and so they had a bunch of different stuff going on unfortunately that wasn't a time where i was like fully involved in networking so i didn't really get a full experience with that 
Yeah. So at that point, you know, everyone was looking to find a way to network with other young professionals. So I was like, well, why don't we just create a group? And, you know, instead of just creating a standard networking group, why don't we get people that are like-minded, just like us that care about the community? Mm -hmm. Why don't we, why don't we bring people that are like-minded that are young professionals that are, that want to give back, that want to be a part of their communities? Why don't we just, like, I can only do so much as one person, right? Is the impact greater with just me? Or is if I can influence others with the same mindset yeah. and bring us all together? The, well, obviously, the bigger impact is with a bigger group. Yeah. So we continued to go out there, talk to other young professionals, see who actually cared. Um, and, you know, obviously we gauge that by how much they're actually doing in the community. What programs are they getting involved in? What nonprofits are they, are they uh, volunteering with or maybe fundraising for? So out came community impactors. You know, that's this amazing. was a group out. That's literally how it was born. Wow. <laughs> so just, just a, uh, just a bunch of young professionals with the same mindset of wanting to be involved and help their communities through community service, volunteering, fundraising, becoming part of planning committees. Ideally, over the course of time, my goal would be to develop these young professionals into board members. Yeah. So that they can really like, hey, listen, this is a cause that I truly care for and I want to be involved in this. How can I really help them guide the organization forward? And that's through becoming part of the board. Oh, my God. And I love that. Since, since then, man, it's just been that, you know, getting connected with a, a bunch of the local nonprofit organizations and trying to just get my get my group continuing to be involved. So it's it's been man, it's, it's been a dream. Congratulations on the journey. I never heard the story of how community impactors came to be, how you got into it. I never know that you started with with the Boy Scouts helping them. Were you a Boy Scout when you were younger? Never a Boy Scout, and I don't have any. I didn't have any kids, so yeah. <laughs> it was literally just walk in and say, "Hey, listen, I'm I'm a I'm a guy that you can use." So interesting. Yeah, never when I was when I was in in elementary school, my dad was like, or my parents were like, "You can." choose to play sports or you can choose to be in the boy scouts i'm like yeah. well i love ba i love baseball way too much to be involved in this yeah so that's where that's the road i took for those people out there who aren't currently involved in the local community it can look intimidating to see okay there's all these different clubs i could join how would you recommend that someone get involved in their local community how would you recommend they begin I think the first part is just finding your passion. You know, f for me, it, it could be something that you were touched by. It could be a family member had an illness. So you're looking for some sort of healthcare nonprofit organization uh, like Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, like the Alzheimer's Association, like the American Cancer Society. Uh, so there's you know, really, it's like, what do you care most about? Do you care about social issues? Do you care about the youth? So really, really taking a look and say, listen, like, what do I, what do I care about? Where do I want to make change the most? And then honestly, it's as simple. I say it's as simple. It, it's as simple as walking in their front door or going to their website first off and just volunteer, right? Mm -hmm. They have, they, there's, there's, there's different ways that you can volunteer. There are, you can do a project based volunteer. So you can, if they have something that's coming up or maybe it's like fixing the garden or, or laying some mulch down to like stuff around the facility that you just want to come out for a couple hours of the day uh, where you can just do these project based volunteer opportunities. A lot of these nonprofits hold events throughout the year. It, a lot of them hold an annual gala. They hold a, um, they, they typically hold like maybe like a 5k mm. or some sort of walk. So there's different events that they do throughout the year that you can uh, you can volunteer for. Maybe it's just like handing out water bottles to people in a 5K. Maybe yeah. maybe it's standing at a registration table. So there there are easy things that you can be doing like that. Uh, and then there's the more uh, it really comes down to like how much time do you have? Yep. You know how much time do you want to commit yourself for? Because the next step would be like being a part of a planning committee. Mm. Maybe you're maybe you're helping plan those events. So right now, you know, right, right now I'm, I'm uh, 
on the outreach committee for the up, up and coming global leadership summit here and that they're they're telecasting it from from Chicago but they're doing it wow. like an in person session here in Rochester so we've been like you know obviously like reaching out to local businesses and local nonprofits like are you interested in sponsoring are you interested in in tabling obviously promoting it so we can sell you know make sure we're selling tickets um, they have a great lineup of speakers so you know, it's a, it's a great opportunity and you know the nice thing is is outside of the fulfillment of just like, Hey, I, I'm actually, let me back up a minute. One of the conversations I had with my, with one of my community impactors, when I said, Hey man, I really want to get involved, but I don't have any money. Mm. I'm like money. No one said anything about money. Like I get like, when you, when you hear the word donate, what's the mm. first thing you think about? Donate your money. money. Yeah. Everyone donate your money. Right. So if you, let me help you understand this. Donate does automatically link your brain to money. Yeah. But what's over, what's missed and overlooked is that donate comes in different forms. It can come in money. It can come in materials, but it can also come in what skills do you offer? What time are you, are you going to going to donate to us? Those yes. are things that don't cost you money, right? You may want to donate stuff. You already have sitting around the house that you haven't touched in five years. That's material stuff that you can donate, right? Yeah. Time. Hey, let me look. Let me look how much time I have now. I work forty hours a week. Do I have five hours a month? Do I have two hours a month? These are things like that's just donating time. It could be showing up, right? You can, if you want to, you know, manhandle some stuff around the garden, or if you want to put in fence, or like stuff like that, or it could be your skills. You, I mean, you and I both come from a background of one customer service. I think most mm -hmm. importantly, two, uh, building relationships, three sales. Yeah. But people are doing their careers every day. They, they're, they can continue to grow their skills and the, with their same profession that they're in right now and utilizing those outside of the organization that they're working for. That's not in competition with the organization that they're working for. Yes. So they can continue to expand on those skills with organizations that don't have that type of, or they don't have access to that type of talent because they simply can't afford it. Yeah. And it helps you see a different perspective of the world. What, what solutions are you trying to re solve for in your own community? Like, what are you trying to solve for? What's going on in your community? <laughs> just that gives you the, the, the trajectory to just like get into the community to see what's going on. So then you can start thinking of, Oh, well, here's some solutions that may work that I can actually apply that we can, that I can present and hopefully, you know, again, guide the organization forward and lead those efforts. That's right. That's right. Just looking around to that last part that you said, looking around at different problems in the community that match both your passion as well as what it is that you're good at. And if you're, if you are a very young professional, let's say you don't have tons of quote unquote valuable skills yet, then maybe it could look like you helping with, with the mulch out front or helping, you know, clean up or helping hand out bottles at the 5k or helping with the, with the small things that eventually lead to the big things as you build more relationships. But there's so many different things that you can look at and you can find clubs that will help enhance your skills at the same time. Like what you were saying, Kyle, like I think about Toastmasters and, and there's a Toastmasters club in every single local area. And they're not doing that for profit. Like that is in order to help young professionals and older professionals become more skilled in presentation skills. So you could help out there. You could help out with, uh, with a homeless shelter. You could help out with a battered women's shelter. You, you could help out in, in so many different ways and capacities, whether it's serving food at the soup kitchen or getting involved in a local nonprofit that means something to you, like the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Like there's so many and that can look intimidating, but ask yourself like what you said, where do my passions lie based on my own personal story and my own past experiences? And then start there. You started with the Boy Scouts. Now you are moving on to different opportunity after different opportunity. And you probably never knew that community impactors would have became a thing before COVID. But now it's here because you started. And I think that's the biggest thing. Start. Notice how it makes you feel. Donate your time. It's the greatest resource that you can give anybody is your time. It's the most valuable. Community impactors. 
is that based out of Rochester? Is it national? Is it like what, where currently is that for people who want to get involved and learn more about it? And what's your, what's your vision with community impactors? Right now it's, it's really just, it's a Rochester thing. That's uh, something that, that was really born out of, born out of the, the need. Um, it's not uh, as, as, as wonderful of a dream it would be to, to be national and just be encouraging young, young professionals all across the world, all across the United States to get involved in their communities. Um, right now, it's just starting from, from, uh, from the 585. You can, uh, <laughs> you can find that yeah, we're, it's, you know, it's a work in progress. You know, like I said, yep. that's, that's, that's a passion project for me. And, you know, I'm still learning a lot, even on that side, as far as even with the marketing and we don't have a, we don't even have a webpage right now. You can find us on, on LinkedIn. You can connect with me directly on LinkedIn. Uh, so we're still working on the actual website development of that. Um, so we, you know, right now I'm getting to this point where I'm, I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable, like handing off some of the responsibilities that I've taken on for the past you know year and a half two years uh so it's been nice to be able to start re relying on some of the people on my core team that have started taking up some of these um these tasks and responsibilities so it's starting to open me up to be able to focus on some other things with us setting up some new events um yeah i think that was kind of just of all the questions right yeah, no, that, that's a great gist. So everyone, I'm going to have links in the description for the Community Impactors LinkedIn page for Kyle's LinkedIn page so you can connect with him. And brother, I just want to first, thank you for being on. Second, and you can look back at all the other episodes we do. I don't say this all the time. This was one of my favorite episodes as of late because this was real talk on emotions, on things that a lot of people aren't talking about. And people need to hear this, right? It's emotional intelligence, you know, one-on-one, but like this is really powerful stuff that will help people to live their own truth, make a positive difference in their community with the ones that they love. And I appreciate you opening up and being vulnerable in this conversation to, to share those insights. So thank you very much, brother. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I enjoyed all this. It was really my pleasure, man. Until next time, we'll talk soon. Thank you, Kyle. Yes, sir. There's so much in this conversation, guys, from a conversational standpoint, from a listening standpoint, from a supportive standpoint, from a coaching and a mentorship standpoint. There's so much that we went over where I hope any of these separate five-part conversations or the five-minute conversations really sticks out for you. And I hope you heard something that makes you think, you know, I'm going to start doing this, or I'm going to stop doing this, or I'm going to get involved with my local community and serve in this capacity in order to help people with my own skills and abilities. And what I would say is just get started, you know, get started with an organization, something in your local area. Like we talked about so many different things. I won't say them again, but get started with something. Notice the way it makes you feel to make a difference using your own skills and abilities. And I can only imagine where it will lead you from there. So if you took anything away from this conversation, Share this show with just one other person. Links are in the description to go connect with Kyle Palmer, to go check out the Community Impactors. Even if you're not in the 585, the Rochester area, you can still check it out and get inspiration for your own local area. Maybe you put something together yourself for the young professionals in your area or for the not so young professionals. Maybe you create something for that. Whatever it is, the power is yours. The choice is yours. So what will you do with it? Thank you so much for watching. And until we talk again next time, continue to be better.